this is i am presenting in the form of some theory which is relevant for this topic and a case presentation of a massive irreparable cuff tear with true pseudo paralysis so this is my profile in brief so the case history is that i had a 63 year old lady who presented with acute on chronic pain in her non dominant left shoulder she had a very trivial injury to her left shoulder due to a sudden jerk while climbing down stairs and then the pain progressively worsened and this is a typical patient of rotator cuff tear where there is a acute and chronic event you might also have a true traumatic event so this is her clinical presentation come forward so this is what we call as true pseudo paralysis so the patient is not able to initiate any forward flexion whatsoever so anything less than 90 degrees when we label it as a true pseudo paralysis so this is the severest form of rotator cuff tear and the maximum disability that you are going to see she also had an external rotation lag sign which basically tells us that her posterior infraspinatus is also involved and she is unable to hold it it becomes very important to check for a teres minor and whether her teres minor is intact this is the horn blower sign okay. where we check for the function of the teres minor the ability to hold her arm in external rotation in 90 degree abduction so she can external rotate at 90 degree abduction telling me that her teres minor is intact so one good sign that she doesn't really have an irreparable cuff tear now quickly a few basic points because i think this is a meet which is focused on basics of arthroscopy you all need to know how to get a true ap view you all would agree this is exactly how our technicians get our ap view with the overlap of the glenoid and the humeral head and this is actually one of our technicians in nanavati hospital and i just asked him how do you do it and this is how they do it this is not what you want because you're not going to see the profile of the humeral head you're not going to get the acromiohumeral distance you need to do what is called the true ap view also called the grashi view so you need to turn the patient in such a way that the scapula is parallel to the cassette that's the position of the gantry and it should be directed towards the coracoid and then that's how you get a true ap view quickly this is how you get a scapular y view and that gives you the morphology of the acromion so the x ray beam is parallel to the scapular spine and that's the scapular y view that's how you turn the patient such that the x ray beam is parallel to the scapular spine neutral rotation that's the scapular y view that's that will give you the morphology of the acromion whether it is a smooth curved or a hooked acromion this is the typical ap view which gives you the gothic arch and it tells you that there is no overriding of the humeral head and the acromiohumeral distance is maintained anything less than 7 mm or 6 mm we then start worrying uh, whether the cuff tear is irreparable that's the breakage of the uh, gothic arch so social sign tells us if there is any impingement or chronic impingement so there is sclerosis on the under surface of the acromion that's what we call as a social sign and these are the various acromion morphologies which we know either it is smooth curved or hooked that's the smooth one that's the curved one and that's the hooked one now keeled acromion is a very rare variety and that is probably the only indication for an isolated acromioplasty that this is the take home message to all the audience subacromial decompression and acromioplasty is part of your cuff repair do not ever do it as an isolated procedure except for this rare entity because this is known to cause a bursal surface tear and then a complete tear with this knowledge we now go for the critical shoulder angle now there is awareness that the lateral extension of the acromion is also very important so the increased critical shoulder angle tells you that there is a lateral extension to your uh, acromion and that also needs to be taken care of in the acromioplasty otherwise the patient will continue to have a risk factor for retears so this is the mri of our patient with pseudo paralysis her subscapularis was intact she had a massive retracted supraspinatus tear as you can see the tendon is gone all the way up to the glenoid or the edge of the humeral head the y view is very important on the mri where you get to know whether there is any significant fatty infiltration there is wasting here as you can see the tangent sign the muscle belly is below the tangent sign but minimal fatty infiltration so i decided to go ahead with a complete repair because i felt this is a repairable tear because what was my thought process there is minimal fatty infiltration her teres minor was intact her acromiohumeral distance was maintained and i counseled her that i might not be able to get a complete repair but a partial repair for sure so this is the thought process that i want all the audience to have so you need to have proper x rays a true ap a scapular y view an understanding of her acromion type an understanding of her mri grade of retraction number of tendons involved and an understanding of the amount of fatty infiltration and wasting on the 
scapular on the uh, sagittal oblique view what is called as a gutalier grading with this understanding let's go for the technical tips and tricks this is her tear it's a massive retracted tear i am viewing from the posterior portal this is the right shoulder i am unable to get the cuff all the way it appears as if it's irreparable so the first thing that we do is we enter the subacromial space this is the kind of image you will see the ca ligament is completely frayed you start doing a little bit of ca recession we never cut the coracoacromial ligament we use the radio frequency device and we just recess the coracoacromial ligament and we need to expose the anterior lateral corner of the acromion so that's the point where the impingement is been documented to be primarily responsible so that i'm just identifying the anterior lateral corner and the idea of me doing the ca recession is to just create space between my repair and the acromion so that there is no impingement after my repair so just use your radio frequency device gradually go on exposing the anterior lateral corner of the acromion like so don't cut the entire ca ligament so you can see i have kept the ca ligament intact i'm just recessing it that's the anterior lateral area and now i'll be using a burr you make sure you don't cut any of those deltoid fibers you just release the in, inner deltoid fascia and then the burr is being used to just clear off the anterior lateral corner if i feel that there is a keeled acromion i'll be more aggressive if i feel there is a lateral extension of the acromion i'll work on the lateral aspect also i also do a lot of clearance of this lateral bursal extension which you're going to see all of us would agree that these patients have got a lot of lateral arm pain and that happens because the bursal inflammation actually extends onto the lateral aspect of the arm through this bursal inflammation so i clear that out this is the bicep stenotomy that has been done and that's the uh, clearance of the lateral bursal extension right there all that i clear it out now coming to the tear pattern identification the first thing that you're going to do is identify the tear pattern so this is seeming to be an irreparable tear so i now start doing my releases and that's an important take home message not only in this case in all the cases make sure that you create a low tension repair otherwise you will have a re tear so the first thing that we do is we start doing a, a intra articular release so i i i start off from the intra articular space so this is the left shoulder the humeral head is on your left hand side the glenoid is on your right hand side bicep stenotomy has been done my liberator comes and we releasing at the level of the supra glenoid tubercle this is the area of the coraco humeral ligament as charlie neer pointed out way back in the 1950s and 60s the coraco humeral ligament is the most important structure that contracts holding your rotator cuff back and that has to be released then you release the posterior adhesions between your posterior cuff and your posterior glenoid so now i am in the lateral portal what the liberator is in the posterior area and re re releasing it at the back this is what we call as a juxta articular release we then release the posterior bursal curtain now this is can be very intimidating for young surgeons so what is bursa what is cuff so make sure that you rotate the arm when you rotate the arm what moves is the rotator cuff what doesn't move is the bursa so this is the trick that you need to do so what is bursa what is cuff rotate the arm so when you rotate the cuff moves but the bursa doesn't and once i'm sure that what is bursa what is cuff you do you do need to do this posterior bursal curtain release otherwise you will not have a cuff repair now let us see if the cuff comes back so with these releases you can see how flexible this cuff has got i'm able to get it all the way to the edge of the tuberosity and most of our shoulder surgeons would agree that many of these tears when which appear irreparable then become reparable and then follow the fracture principles you take a traction stitch find out which is the direction so this is an l shaped tear so this is the kind of traction stitch you sometimes you'll have to take in different directions you then prepare the tuberosity very gentle decortication it's what is called as an unhappy marriage rotator cuff repair is like an unhappy marriage so a poor quality bone is supposed to heal to a poor quality tissue that is the rotator cuff you then get your spinal needle at a dead man angle of nearing 90 degree so that you get a perpendicular access to the subchondral bone right at the edge of the cartilage you start placing your anchors you could place it from front to back or back to front so in this case i placed three triple loaded anchors because of the massiveness of the uh, tear you create these crimson duvet or bone marrow vents so i adopt the principles of single row and double row repair you pass the stitches through the rotator cuff using various devices anti grade devices and retrograde devices and start tying the knots this is the lateral row anchor so the sutures from the medial row have been loaded onto the lateral row in order to achieve a lateral row repair
that's the second lateral row anchor this is what you call as a suture bridge or a w configuration so medial row anchor sutures pass through the cuff sutures tied the tied sutures are not cut and loaded onto the lateral row anchors such that you are able to get a footprint repair one of the tips you need to remember is that you need to this is the intra articular view where the entire cuff has been restored one of the tips you need to remember is that you need to pass the stitches right at the uh, you need don't need to pass it right at the muscle tendon junction you need to be at least 3 to 4 mm away from the muscle tendon junction you need to make sure that each of these stitches are passed at different points they're not in a linear pattern so that if god forbid there is a re injury the re tear doesn't happen in a proper Uh, linear fashion and the entire rotator cuff becomes meaningless to be repaired ahead so you pass in a little bit of a zigzag pa pattern and away from the muscle tendon junction so that there is no type 2 tear where the entire rotator cuff tears off and only muscle is left you can use the scorpion device you can use the first pass device which are anti grade devices you can use retro grade devices like the lasso devices from the back of the shoulder and uh, of course every tear pattern uh, has its own a uh, uh, way of going ahead so if you have a uh, u shaped tear you need to do what is called a side to side stitches etc so this is the idea is to just give you a brief as to how you need to you do a thorough subacromial decompression how you need to assess the tear pattern how you need to prepare the tuberosities you need to place the anchors right at the edge of the bone you need to have various devices to pass the stitches through the cuff away from the muscle tendon junction repair the cuff on the medial side and if you feel that you have a footprint low tension repair only then do a double row repair so this is the follow up of the patient at 8 months of pseudo paralysis so she still has a lot of scapular function this is not pure shoulder function so the rehab has to continue up to a year and she got excellent external rotation now this is a 16 month follow up and what you need to observe is that she has been taught to hold her scapula in an isometric position and then lift her shoulder up giving her pure shoulder function so this is her post operative uh, images at about uh, 16 months you can see the cuff has been well repaired it's a low tension repair you can see the an uh, anchors at a perfect dead man angle you can see the pre op image and a comparative post op image now what's very interesting is if you follow these principles fatty infiltration is not uh, uh, is it doesn't recover but muscle volume does recover so you can see pre operatively there is wasting but post operatively the muscle volume has improved another patient of pseudo paralysis relatively elderly if you select your patients properly do your te uh, techniques properly you will have excellent function so my take home message is that even if it's pseudo paralysis it is reversible as long as you follow all these principles do not operate on cases who are having anterior superior escape who are having grade 3 or grade 4 fatty infiltration thank you for your kind attention